Hey everyone, so today is Columbus Day and there was a study and a documentary that just came out that Columbus, Christopher Columbus has been confirmed to be of Jewish origin. There was a genetic study, DNA study that had been done, uh, took quite a while to actually conclude, but uh, apparently it just came out that it's been confirmed decisively that the evidence, the DNA evidence is consistent with the idea that Christopher Columbus may have been of Jewish origin origin. Now, there's been a lot of speculation uh, over the years that Columbus was a Jew or was a converso, somebody that uh, was keeping their Judaism a secret after the after uh, Ferdinand and Isabella put out decrees that Jews had to convert, and then eventually they were uh, sent away from, uh, from Spain and the Iberian Peninsula, that a lot of Jews were uh, sometimes called Moranos. Uh, we call them conversos. Moranos means pigs. It's not a, not a flattering term, but they were called conversos uh, because they, they kept their Judaism in practice in secret. And the, again, their presentation would be uh, practicing Catholicism, but in secret, they would, they'd be practicing Jews. There'd been a lot of talk about Columbus being one of those types of people for a, for a long time. Uh, part of the reason for that is because some of the people who helped finance his explorations were converso Jews. You had, for example, uh, Rodrigo de Triana, who came, who was a converso, who was on uh, Columbus's initial voyage, and he was he was actually the first person to spot land. The person who spotted land was of Jewish ancestry. You also had Luis de Torres, who was a who was born as Yosef Ben Halevi, uh, who went as Columbus's interpreter, and um, was perhaps the first person to step foot on land in the New World. So one could say that it's very possible that the very first person of European origin to ever step foot in the New World was in fact a Jew, someone who was born uh, a Jew. Uh, there, there's a lot of interesting uh, insights that are also connected with, with Columbus's uh, sort of secret observance or secret connection with his Jewish roots. The fact that in his personal journals, he had a very deep familiarity uh, with with Hebrew and, and Judaism. He also had cryptic notes in his personal writings. For example, some people claim that on some of his uh, some of his paperwork, he had the base hey, which stands for in in our tradition Baruch Hashem or Be'ezras Hashem, with the help of God, which was uh, a traditional thing for quite some time. Uh, some claim that Columbus himself has this on some of his documents. Whatever the case may be. Uh, there is a strong Jewish connection and vibe to Columbus and his journeys, uh, wh whether or not that is actually confirmed in the genetics. Uh, well, another interesting little tidbit is that Columbus leaves Spain on August 3rd, 1492. Now, the decree of all Jews needing to leave Spain happens the day before. So this is the day after uh, that they set sail. Now, it's interesting that August 2nd, 1492 was Tishabov that year, the, the fast day in the Jewish calendar that commemorates all sorts of sad events, including the destruction of both holy temples. And this being the uh, being the time where the, where the Jews are exiled from Spain or, or sent out from Spain, this, this was also fit very much in line with the sad story of Jewish history, all things being centered on Tishabov. And it happens to be that that Columbus and his men leave the next day, the day after Jews are being sent out from Spain. Very interesting thing to consider. Again, what you make from it is, is all speculation, but it is interesting nonetheless. There's other interesting aspects of Jews being involved in the voyage of Columbus itself. So you have, for example, um, Rabbi Avram Zakuta, who uh, not only was a rabbi at the time, but was also an astronomer, astronomer for royalty. And he, through his writings and his tools, uh, actually met with Columbus and gave him some of the uh, tools needed to, to navigate. Uh, in fact, the Lubavitcher Rebbe in a Fabreng, a public gathering of Yudbeis Tammuz 1984, Yudbeis Tammuz Tufshin Mem Dalid, 
uh, actually discusses this meeting that Avram Zakuto, Rabbi Zakuto, had with Columbus and giving him the necessary information and tools that he would need for his journey. Uh, again, we, we also know that Columbus used um, some of the astrological writings and astronomical writings of uh, the Ibn Ezra. Uh, that, is, that is something that is documented. We also know that one of the tools that were used by Columbus was invented by the Ralbag, Rabbi Levi ben Gershon. So there are a lot of interesting Jewish elements to the story of Columbus, whether or not Columbus himself was a secret Jew, had Jewish origin, but the, the DNA confirmation seems to imply that this idea that he had Jewish ancestry is consistent with the, uh, with, with the DNA, with, with, the actual, with the evidence on the ground. I think the I think the timing is a little bit interesting uh, in the discovery of the DNA confirming uh, Columbus's Jewish origins in the sense that Columbus lately in, in the past bunch of years has sort of fallen out of favor with the general public. He's seen as a, a colonizer and he's fallen out of favor because of some of the things that went on during his voyages. And so I, I think it's, again, interesting that Columbus is mentioned uh, specifically his DNA and his his Jewish roots uh, at being part of who he is are that they come to the fore all of a sudden when uh, the, the same crowd that tends to be against Western civilization uh, and against Israel uh, and sees Jews as colonizers over the oppressed uh, Palestinians. I, I think it's just interesting the timing that all of this all of these ideas sort of come out. Now again, so whether Columbus had Jewish ancestry or not, or Jewish genes or not, that plays really no role in his life decisions and choices. I did want to share with you this um, brief video that sort of goes through and sort of tries to paint a more objective view of Columbus's life, recognizing his faults and, and foibles that happened along the way, uh, but also trying to paint a broader picture as to what one's on. Check, check out this video uh, put out by PragerU, and um, you know, we'll, we can discuss it as it goes along, some of the interesting points. Check this out. For centuries, he was universally admired as a hero. Now, he's widely considered to be a despoiler of paradise, an enslaver, and a genocidal maniac. I'm talking, of course, about Christopher Columbus. So which is true? Is he a hero or a villain? The truth is complicated, as the truth often is, especially when you have to go back 500 years to find it. But let's try to get as close as we can. Columbus was born in 1451 in the port city of Genoa, Italy. At a time when birth often determined destiny, his origins were entirely unremarkable. His father was a middle-class wool weaver who expected his son to follow the same path. But Columbus had different plans. The age of discovery was dawning. The future belonged to the bold, and the bold went to sea. By the time he turned 30, Columbus had sailed to Iceland, Ireland, and Africa. Somewhere on his many voyages, he became obsessed with the idea that there was a westward sea route from Europe to India. But there were no maps to consult, only wild rumors of sea monsters and endless ocean. He put together the 15th century version of a PowerPoint presentation for the King of Portugal, then the world's leading sea power. But the king, heeding the advice of his experts, turned him down. It simply couldn't be done, the experts told the king. It was pure speculation, and an expensive one at that. So Columbus took his plans to Spain. But King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella weren't interested either, at least not at first. Columbus persevered. After eight years, they finally relented. They gave the explorer three small ships. There was a time when every school kid knew their names the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, and the year in which Columbus set sail, 1492. Except for a compass and the stars, Columbus had virtually no navigation tools at his disposal. He was, to mix metaphors, flying blind. He was heading west. That's about all he knew. Once the ships left the Canary Islands, they were on their own. His crews stayed loyal for the first week, but by the third week, they had lost their nerve. Columbus, however, never lost his. By sheer force of will, he kept his men in line. Finally, after 10 long weeks at sea, on the night of October 11th, Columbus spotted land. He called it San Salvador, 
Today, we know it as the Bahamas. There, Columbus and his men encountered the Taino tribe. The first encounter between Europe and the Americas went well. The Taino were curious and helpful. Columbus was emphatic that his crew treat them with kindness and respect. Lest you think that Columbus stumbled on the Garden of Eden, the islands were also inhabited by the Caribs, a tribe of cannibals for whom, according to Pulitzer Prize-winning historian Samuel Eliot Morrison, babies were a delicacy, or in Morrison's words, a toothsome morsel. Like every place else on earth, in every time in history, the local peoples were a mixed bag. Some good, some not so good. Upon his return to Spain, word of the Italian explorer's successful voyage quickly spread throughout Europe. A new world had been discovered, and the old world would never be the same. Columbus was a man meant for the sea. On land, he was easily outmaneuvered and betrayed by professional politicians and bureaucrats. It is on their dubious, self-serving accounts that modern attacks on Columbus's reputation are based. In his own day, these attacks made the explorer's life a misery. Columbus was not blameless. He sold natives into slavery. But the explorer did not invent slavery, which was common around the world long before and long after Columbus's time. As for the charge of genocide, there was no genocide. There were atrocities, most occurring after Columbus was dead and gone. There was also widespread intermarriage between the Spaniards and the natives, which eventually led to the people we now call Hispanic or Latino. It's unfair to focus only on Columbus's sins. It's also unfair to judge someone who lived 500 years ago by today's standards. His own assessment of his actions is much more revealing. Let those who are fond of blaming and finding fault, while they sit safely at home, ask, Why did you not do thus and so? Well, there's a reason why Columbus has so long been celebrated. Why so many statues, schools, towns, cities, a national holiday, an Ivy League university, and even a country bear his name. It's this simple fact. When we celebrate Columbus, we celebrate the arrival of Western civilization to the Western Hemisphere. And if you can't celebrate that, it says much more about your moral compass than about history's greatest explorer. And I think I think there's a lot of truth to that, and it it does it does paint this scene uh, in in a in a more objective sort of way, acknowledging the faults, but also uh, making sure to make mention of the the tremendous good that was brought to civilization through the deeds of Columbus. One thing that some historians and Jewish theologians have pointed out is the divine providence that's contained within the Columbus saga. That at the same moment that the Jews are being kicked out of Spain and there's religious persecution in the old world, at that very same moment, the new world is being established as a place that's going to support religious freedom. It's interesting because it says in our tradition that before God puts the problem, he puts already in place the solution to the problem. Before the ailment, the cure is already in place. And so we see uh, the balance of the old world, the new world, that as the old world is crumbling and Jews and religious freedoms are no longer welcome, that same voyage sets the stage for the establishment of freedom of religion. So uh, again, uh, love to hear what you think on this. Be, be happy to hear in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this content, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and we'd love to stay in touch. Have a wonderful day and see all of you real soon.